eight o'clock. Now, lots of people, you probably are doing it too, waiting in for those crucial Christmas deliveries this week. But what are your rights if they don't come and you've ordered them and then it ruins perhaps your Christmas and someone else? Well, Sean is taking a look at this. It's a it, bugbear of all of us. It is. It? it is. How do you get it delivered? Is yeah. it left in a bin? Is it put on the doorstep? Do they leave it at a neighbour? Or pretend they've been and haven't? No, surely not. That happens, it, Sean. All, well, we hear all of these kind of things happen, don't they? It's a big, big market now. Morning, everybody. We are shopping so much online, aren't we, that this is becoming a bigger issue each year. More and more of us ordering these things online. It reckoned about £2 in every £5 this season will be spent online. So that obviously puts a greater stress on the system. And all these companies then maybe have a few more delays and difficulties than they would have done in previous years. According to one consumer group, over the past six months, complaints about package deliveries have gone up over 40%. When you're in the rut to Christmas, what are your rights if things go wrong? Let's have a chat to Martin James, independent consumer expert. Morning, Martin. Morning, Sean. Now, just first up, if you're expecting something before Christmas in the next few days and it doesn't arrive and you know it's not going to get there before Christmas, what are your rights? What should you do? So I think you've got to be quite pragmatic about it when it comes down to it because at the end of the day, you want the kids or the family to have something to open. So most delivery companies will have a specified delivery date, by which point you should have received your package. If you've not got it within that period of time, then you've got every right to cancel the order, ask for a full refund, along with the delivery charges. Now, I appreciate that sometimes it's because you get a little bit close to the bone to get something else. We're just in the nick of the time for you to go elsewhere if your company isn't delivering. But you are entitled to a refund and you can specify that you don't want the delivery to go ahead if you're worried that you're going to be out of time. And you can track a lot of these packages beforehand. So you feel like everybody's becoming an expert in tracking now. You know, you've got your website and the little number you have to put in. If you get a feeling that it's not going to arrive, it hasn't been dispatched yet, do you have rights at that point as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, ultimately, when you agree to buy something from a retailer, there's a contract between you and the company that you buy the goods from. Now, whoever they contract to get those goods to you on time, in good condition and everything else, that's really their problem. Their obligation is to meet the contract that they've agreed with you. And any problems that arise as a result of that, you can certainly take it up as a complaint or pursue the matter further. What about how it's delivered? Because I know we're all sort of desperate just to get them, so maybe this time of year we're not so bothered if they're left on the doorstep as long as it's there when we get there. But you hear stories, people have been getting in touch with us every year, it seems, about chucked over the fence or left in a recycling bin or even heard one left in a general waste bin. When, <laughs> when people came to open it, they saw something in there having had a note through the door. Mm. Is all that okay? Well, I'd love to say that the waste bin example is a one-off, but it really isn't. I've heard of loads of cases where parcels have been left in waste bins um, and then it's bin day. And uh, that's been and the end of the that. Um, in one of the strangest ones we saw, um, a woman found that her parcel had been chucked on the top of her carport. She had to lean out of the window and hit it with a broom to get it to come right. back down, by which point it was pretty much dead. Um, so what was in it? <laughs> from what I understand, <laughs> it was really quite expensive books. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, okay. We got the money back on that one, so that's, that's always good. good. But I think the important thing um, for many people is you can specify where you want items to be left. But increasingly, and I, I know it's happened to me, I live in a block of flats, um, you get home and you find that your um, front doormat's looking quite lumpy because right. there's loads of stuff underneath it. And there have been reports of thieves pinching things from, um, uh, from outside of stores so get, as well. Just very briefly before we go, Toys R Us, an example of, we've heard it with a few other retailers, difficulties before Christmas. Is there anything consumers should be thinking about the companies they're buying from? So if you've got vouchers, then you bear in mind that if the company goes bust, you'll probably lose the vouchers as well. So you might want to think about swapping those or sourcing something or maybe using those to buy a gift before um, the bankruptcy, if it happens, kicks in. It's a slow process, but nevertheless, we don't know what might happen. They might keep the company running for a short period of time. It doesn't mean it's all going to go wrong, but make sure you use the vouchers and gift cards quickly. Nice one. Thank you. Martin James there, independent consumer expert. So there you go, Naga. Click and collect is another thing you can do as well, of course, if you don't want to go I've through the whole to that now. malarkey of getting it to your neighbours or whatever, get yeah. it to the store. Thanks very much, Dan. Thanks very much.